Hey everybody, it's Evan here for Method and uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these video tutorials and I wanted to get back into it and change it up a little bit. And so, you know, a lot of things going on. Um, I got married, got a new ring here, um, got some new glasses. I've launched a new podcast with some friends of mine from Twitter and uh, that's at arcaspeakpodcast.com and um, that's a recent thing. Um, I hope you'll check it out. And uh, I'm working on some new stuff from Method, and I wanted to start off with something that I'm hoping will become a uh, regular appearance on the website, which is going to be what I call a Method Cast Quickie. And the idea here is that it's just something that I don't have to put a ton of production time into, like I have with my long form tutorials in the past, because there's just so much work that goes into editing those and uploading them and getting all the sites set up for them. Um, so this is a new deal. And also, you know, I started taking donations on the site and uh, that really helps me out so that I can uh, pay for the bandwidth and the hosting and all the stuff that goes into making these tutorials for you guys. So I hope that you'll uh, click the donate button as well. Anyway, let's jump into it here. Um, today's topic is to uh, show you how I create mullions on window like curtain walls inside of Form Z and this also works in Bonsai. Um, this is just adding one of those levels of detail to the project that um, I think a lot of times you know it's a pain in the butt to build these things because they change and you gotta move them around so I wanna show you how I do it just to kinda get it in the model and make it look good um, at least from a distance alright so let's jump into it all right, so um, here is a building that I'm actually working on right now, and it's, it's a remodel, and we're looking at putting in some curtain walls. And so what I did was I, I took out the old um, window systems that were in here, and I just drew in a quick pane of glass. And let me do that again here real quick, just so you can kind of see what I, what I do. It's pretty easy. I just choose a material, use the, the vector line drawing, and then uh, make sure I'm doing a 3D extrusion. And a couple things here that are kind of quick little tips when you're going to be building these things is we're going to be manipulating the reference plane quite a bit. And so um, one of the things that I do in Form Z is I always have this reference plane lock button turned on because I don't like it moving around. Let me turn it off. And you can see that when I when I turn it off, you know, I'm sure some people like this, but you know, they like it lets you draw on any plane you, you you just want to go and draw right on and I like to keep that off because I don't like that thing jumping around um, a lot of times I know exactly where I want to draw and so I'll just set the reference plane before I draw instead of doing the dynamic reference plane so that's one thing that you want to think about and so I typically have it set down here to just the normal um, flat reference plane that's the XY plane and then I have it locked and that's important because that is what's controlling the way that the extrusions happen and so if I were to go down here and you know snap to this midpoint and double click on this one I know that it's going to extrude straight up which is perpendicular to that reference plane so that's how I start off and just draw my glass okay um, now what if um, I didn't want to snap to that midpoint. You know, I could move it after the fact. Another way to do that would be to draw it right on the mullions and extrude that up. And then I would use a tool like extrude, or sorry, extend, which I, I have mapped to my X key, and extend a face, and then you can click on a segment and then where you want it to extend to. And so that can also be a way to help you kind of get that plane exactly where you want it. All right, so and then if you know you want it like three inches out from there, then you could you could move it. So I will grab it and just start moving it in the direction I want, and then just type three, return, and it moved three inches out. All right, so anyway, into the mullions. Um, I'm going to change my material just to a white material. There's a couple things that that I do to help me build mullions, and I love to use the parametric tools that are part of Form Z for this kind of thing. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is kind of define the verticals. And one thing that I do is I, I like to set up kind of a set of guides. You know, if I measure this out, 
I'll hit the D key, which I've mapped for, for distance down here in the measurement tool. And I can see that, you know, that it's some weird measurement because this is an as-built model from the building that's really there. It's 35 foot 4 and 13 sixteenths, really, really odd number. So it's close to 36 feet. So I know that I can probably get a pretty close estimate of a, of a three foot module for mullions, which, which is what I want to use for this. But sometimes I like to use the mesh tool, which is over here, and I like to set the distance up to something that I think it's going to be. And then I like to just click on that object and kind of get an idea for how many divisions I'm going to be having and to see how they line up. Um, and the nice thing about this being a parametric mesh, you can see how the lines are in orange right now. If I change that to 6 feet and hit return, it just automatically updates it on the fly. I can go to 4 feet and see how that looks. So you can see I, I can play with this and I can also manipulate where that mesh begins. So if I know I want it to begin at some other spot, you, you can move that thing around. So if you say normal alignment and then you move this thing, you can see that the mesh actually moves with it. And so you can snap to other points on your model if you want to. If you hit center, which it kind of works well for this model because I do have a, a center line for structure here. Um, and if I'm going to go three feet, that just gives me a nice visual idea of what's going to be happening on this face. Now, as soon as you click on another tool, that parametricness is going to go away. And so you want to get all this thing set up. You know, you can also rotate that mesh if you want to. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is mesh that up, go back to zero, set that to center. And then if I click on the pointer tool, now that parametric option is gone from the, the object. Um, you'll see here if I, if I look at the show controls button, it's grayed out. So there's no parametric controls with this object anymore. At some point, I'm going to go back to unmesh, and I'll get rid of the um, mesh on this object because I won't I won't need it later. But for now, it's kind of nice just to have those things as a guide, and you know that will pass in early stages of modeling as mullions right there. You can see like over here, I can just it just gives you an idea of what mullions would look like without having to model all that stuff yet. Well, uh, you know you could wait till later to do that. So that's, that's one thing that I tend to do, and so I'll kind of mesh up, you know, these, these different um, planes just to get an idea of where my mullions are going to be later on and not have to worry about it right now. So then the other thing <clears throat> that I'll do is I'm going to go in and uh, draw my vertical mullions first before I do the outer frames, okay? And uh, so what I'm going to do is just zoom in on this and... I like to use, well, there's a couple ways to do it, but if you just go ahead and use the vertical line tool, the vector line tool again, and this time I'm going to change the reference plane to just be right on the window. So as soon as I click there, I have this turned off because I don't like to see it all the time, but the little grid up here shows you where your reference plane is. If you like to keep that on, great. If you don't, you can shut it on and off right there. Um, what I like to do here is go ahead and set this at using the, uh, what do they call this thing? I think it's called like a 3D wall tool or something. I'll set this to center. I'm going to set my wall width to 2 inches, which is my mullion width. And then you can set the height dynamically, or if you know what the depth of your mullions is, you can just type it in. So I'll type in a 2 inch by 6 inch mullion. And then what you do is, because we set the reference plane, is you just draw it right on there. And you can see that that was easy, right? Just double click, done. So there's a mullion. All right. And uh, if we go underneath here, I can move that mullion. I sh probably could have just drawn it here to begin with, but I'm going to move it over into the corner here like that. And the reason I'm going to do that is because now I want to copy, I want to do multiplication copy here of that mullion all the way across. And I can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them. M for move, which is my uh, shortcut. 12 and there we go now you notice how the 12 mullions don't line up with the mesh lines perfectly and that's because of you know the mullions have thickness and the mesh um, is three feet but the end panels are not three feet long because it wasn't a 36 foot long 
sheet of glass, it was 35 foot four and something. So again, I just use those divisions up front to get an idea of what it's going to look like when I do make the mullions, but I don't use it after that point. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, just unmesh that because I don't need it meshed anymore. You could leave it meshed if you want. They, those lines won't show up in the renderings, but um, I like to keep the geometry polygon count low as, a, as, a, as possible when I'm going through these. So there's all my vertical mullions. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the frame for around it. And one thing that I, I like to do is I like to um, delete the two outer mullions. And I like to put a box frame around the whole thing. And the reason I like to do that is because of forms these parametrics, right? So again, I'm going to say now my justification, I don't ever remember which way left or right is. I just go with it and see what happens. So I'm just going to, again, my reference plane is set to the glass. I'm just going to click, and you can see as I start drawing, it's drawing uh, perpendicular to the reference plane. And I did pick the right orientation, which isn't a big deal. You could always pick it later. Um, and click, and now I have this parametric frame. And so you can see, again, it's, it's outlined in orange. I can go ahead and say center justification or right after the fact. So again, it doesn't matter if you choose the wrong one to begin with. And then you also have the ability to shrink or grow that whole frame. Let me show you the whole thing here. And this is one of the reasons I like to use this tool for this until I get the, the curtain wall set exactly how I want it. Um, I like to keep things parametric as long as I possibly can without breaking them. And one of the other cool parametric things in here, if I hit show controls, is you can actually change the thickness of the wall of that mullion too. So if you decide at some point it needs to be thicker or whatever, you can do that. You can also click on this one and you can make it deeper. So that parametric thing is pretty cool. Um, you can also click on the parameters tab and you can type in any of the numbers that you want. So you, if you want the height to be one foot, you, you can type it in. And uh, same for the overall dimension. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn hide controls. The other thing you can do is hit the key shortcut, which is F6, um, which on my laptop doesn't do anything. But if I hit function F6, that's show and hide controls. Um, the same thing as hitting these buttons down here. So that's a cool little uh, tip for time saving. I, I try to use keyboard shortcuts whenever I can. All right, so now um, what do you do if let's just build a couple sets of doors. Let's say that this curtain wall looks looks good enough. Um, there's a couple things that I want to do now is I want to build some doors. So again, I have the reference plane set up exactly how I want it. And this is only eight feet tall. So let's just quickly make a, a eight foot high pair of doors. Again, I'm going to use the 3D wall tool here. This time I'm going to set my wall width to four inches and my height to two because I'm just going to make a two inch thick door. And what I'm going to do is go in here and I'm going to turn on intersection snap so that I can snap to that point. And you can see here that I'm drawing kind of a door shape. And you can see that door goes all the way to the ground. And let's say, um, let's adjust that to the inside of that mullion. Okay. And again, this is why I like to use parametrics because, well, what if I want that wider? It's great because it keeps the uniform thickness all the way around, but lets me adjust it parametrically. The other thing I can do here is set the depth to minus two inches and push it into the wall without having to worry about anything there. Let's say I want a little bit more frame. You know, let's type that in, six inches of frame and get that exactly how I want it. And uh, that's it. That's how you make a door. Now, what if I want a little bit higher kick panel on this door? Well, this is where I would start to um, break the parameters of the object. So if I hit the P tool, which is my push-pull tool, I might pull this bottom kick panel up another four inches. So I have a 10 inch kick at the bottom. I'm also going to take this door and I'm just going to move it back. And you notice how my copies are still on if I hit the option key or the alt key on the keyboard. That gets rid of that. Um, I'm going to move it back. I tap the command key here so that I move it perpendicular to the reference plane. And let's just push it back about three inches so that it's back in there. And then the last thing I would do is um, with this bottom mullion, again, I'm going to break the parameters of it now. 
but I don't need a mullion down there, right? I wouldn't have a, a mullion under the door. So I'm going to right click and isolate the object. And I'm going to jump in here. And I don't know if you guys are using this thing at all. It's super cool. I hit the space bar and I've mapped all of these tools that I use frequently um, that I didn't really want to set keyboard shortcuts for. I can only remember, you know, five or ten keyboard shortcuts. I can't remember them all. So if you use the tool manager, you can actually set that up to be whatever you want and um, it's super, it's really cool so what I have is I have the offset segment tool mapped in there and I'm just gonna click and drag that over to wherever my door is which is here and I wanna grab it bring it to that mullion and then bring another one over to this edge of this mullion and then P push that down alright so there you go reveal the objects and now that mullion is gone from that section all right, um, pretty cool stuff. Um, last thing here, let me go ahead real quick and just make another piece of glass for in the door itself. So I like to, again, my reference plane is still set already in the right direction. And this time I'm just gonna go to a normal 2D um, surface and I'm gonna pick my glass color. And you'll notice that when I zoomed in there, I was snapping to the midpoint there, which puts the glass right where I want it. One of the reasons I like to put glass in that way is, again, it's um, all about those controls. So if I ever need to make that glass bigger or smaller, I can just shrink it and it just snaps to whatever I want it to snap to. It's super cool. And then function F6 or F6 on a normal keyboard will turn that back off. All right, so there you go. Um, that's how I make mullions inside of Form Z and Bonsai, and um, hopefully that helps you. Use that reference plane set tool to get it exactly how you want it every time, and uh, those mullions will be super fast and easy, which is uh, great because it's normally a pretty tedious thing to model. All right, I'll see you guys on the next MethodCast Quickie. Bye.